Let's talk a little bit about AEW Rampage. I know you didn't get <sighs> to see too much of it. How much of it did you get to see? There was one no, match no. everyone was talking about. Well, and a promo that was in the news as well. Don't tell me, um, oh, you, I know you didn't get to see much of it, or how much did you get to? You know exactly what I saw. I read the <laughs> recap like I do every Friday, and I said, I ain't watching this shit. And I didn't. And then you called me and said, oh, every, if I wasn't as bad enough of a mood about the cardboard, you called me and said, oh, everybody's talking about Yuta and Moxley. I said, Yuta and Moxley. Oh, you got to watch Yuta and Moxley. So I watched Yuta and Moxley. And then I was in an even worse mood afterwards. Why do you do these things to me? Some thought you might like it. Some would be crazy. Some would be, what would I have liked about that? It was Moxley's masturbatory, strong style Japanese wrestling fantasies on full display with a, with a <laughs> what was the, what was the thing that anybody liked about this? Just the fact that the guy bled and wouldn't quit? Well, I think the thought is that it elevated Wheeler Yuta, especially with the crowd reaction to him. Oh, you think? And yes. the fact that it was a bloody spec, I'll give them credit. Moxley's been promising a river of blood. He finally delivered it once. Yeah, we'll talk about that. It may be perfect timing with the new Warner Media merger. <laughs> uh, we can talk about that in a second. But no, of course, it elevated. Elevated. <laughs> they, he dropped the elevator on him, still couldn't beat him. Of course, it elevated Wheeler Yuta. Because. It, if you, if, can you imagine if Adam Cole had ever had anybody do for him when he came into company what Wheeler Yuta just was allowed to do because Tony now likes him or his ugly tights and said, well, let's push him to the moon? Or it, it, anybody, Jay Lethal, anybody marketable that you could have done that, it, it, it would be like, Hulk Hogan had decided with Barry Horowitz, hey, Barry, you want to kick out of three leg drops? I'm going to clothesline you. You get up and Hulk up. The people will fucking pop like crazy. Because let me ask you a question, Brian Last. As one of the bigger 80s, 90s WWF fans slash experts, if Hulk Hogan had had a match with Barry Horowitz, where he gave Horowitz his vertical suplex and Horowitz jumped up and looked at him, shook his finger at Hulk, and then Hulk shot him off for the big boot, and he took it and the big leg drop, and then he kicked at it too. And then Hulk said, what the fuck, and got up on a second turnbuckle and dropped the leg off of that, and then he kicked at it too. And then he gave him the axe bomber that he knocked Antonio Inoki out with in Japan, and he kicked at it too. And But now he's bleeding. And then finally, if Hulk Hogan had ever had a submission move, he put that on fucking Barry Horowitz. And Barry Horowitz fucking broke out of that. And then Hogan put him away with a leg drop off the top rope. But then fucking Barry Horowitz was back up on his feet to shake hands with Hogan's fucking cohorts afterwards. Do you think the people would have popped on all those things also? To an extent, but actually, I don't. I don't think so because I think in the eighties there would have been more confusion that it was happening than popping. <laughs> well, that's because people were smarter back then. But I also don't think it's fair to compare Barry Horowitz to Wheeler Yuta because Wheeler Yuta hasn't been used like Barry Horowitz was. No, he hasn't. Barry Horowitz actually got a couple of wins on TV every now and then. That I'm sorry, but besides the fact, at the same time. As you've got another one of these Japanese legends, 50 years old, getting German suplexed onto his head in the turnbuckles and being carried out, unable to move his extremities. And you've got a new programming person. And, and I know you've got some background on this young lady, um, a new programming person that's about to be in charge of Warner Media and all their various networks. And you were taken, I'm not saying that Wheeler Yuta is a horrible human being. And he might even be an okay wrestler. He is an unimpressive physically, smaller, skinny, 
guy with does he have personality? Eh. Eh. Wait, I haven't seen much. And this is the guy you decide that you're going to allow him to spurt blood everywhere on national TV, kick out of a fucking former world champion's every finish. Of course the people were going batshit for something like that. The question is, number one, the precedent you're setting with people kicking out of all this shit at a time when the injury rate's never been higher, and it takes all this shit to beat a guy like if it takes that much to beat that guy, what are you gonna have to do to powerhouse Hobbs? Then you combine the lack of any type of psychology or selling or logic or sense that is in now is infested these guys because they all fantasize, as I said, late at night whether on Wednesdays or any other night, when they're fondling themselves, thinking about Japan, the matches in Japan all look like that, and they all fucking suck now for the same reason. Because Japan lost their mind years ago like we lost ours. And then, on top of that, you let the guy spray blood all over everywhere when a new programmer is more of the HGTV Food Network sensibility and less of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre sensibility. And I don't know what the fuck everybody's looking at. There was blood in Briscoe's and FTR. It was in the middle of a great wrestling match. There was blood in, F, er, in uh, CM Punk and MJF because that was on pay-per-view, and it was a great wrestling match with big stars. This is not the way you, you elevate a young athlete by allowing him, obviously, to be competitive with a person above him, but you don't make the goddamn freak show spectacle with the goddamn blood and the spurting and the ripping and biting you don't while the announcers are saying the words blood and bloodbath and at the same time completely kill every finish and bump in the wrestling business just to get one middle card talent over and i'll tell you what i will be more than happy to i'll do a video if wheeler yuda ever becomes the world champion of any fucking thing, I'll do a video publicly apologizing, but right now, of a lot of young, in-shape, accomplished workers in that company that could have benefited from a massive push like that, they did it for Wheeler Yuta. I, I, you know, I have seen it pointed out We've talked about the four pillars, you know, as they're famously known now. MJF, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, I guess, was it Adam Page? Is he the fourth one? Is he the I fourth don't one? Know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have no idea. There are people who think that the next round of people that Tony's looking to really get behind include Wheeler Yuta and Daniel Garcia. That these are the guys that are the next project for the company. Well, they've got a project ahead of them. Uh, you can't Find a personality machine at the gym. You're going to find that out. But this, again, this match, it was it was every Moxley trope. I, I hate that word, so I'm going to use it because it irritates people. Every Moxley trope, every Moxley cliche, because it's it, he's modern, modern, patterned his shit after modern Japanese strong style shit. They even before the match even starts a dive a jump start they got to fight into the arena for what reason so they can do that japanese fight walk back into the ring it's like okay this is our spot where we go out in the crowd we do this and then we walk pretending to fight at the same time like when i mean bless them but when brody and abdullah used to grab each other by the head and just walk through the crowd like that we got to go over here now I actually like the jump open, though, of Wheeler Yuta being the first guy to 
get Moxley as he's walking through the arena and he's not even in the ring yet. I well, in that, that case, he should have been dressed as the fucking hot dog guy in section C, and he should have bombarded him with the ketchup when he walked by. Uh, but anyway, I'm I'm sorry. You know, curb stomp into the steel stairs just to get the color. You'd have sold well, but there, it's it's Moxley was not going for reveal. Okay, it's Moxley's gimmick to chew on people and bite people and want to break limbs and arms and legs and whatever. It's not even a Steve Austin where he's an anti-hero when he's doing things to people that have done wrong to him. It's just this freak show garbage death match. Oh, he loves blood. He's not going for revenge. The guy he's in the ring with is clearly overmatched, but the the people, the AEW fans, remember, there's a set amount of them, and we see them every week. They're cheering an uber heelish massacre from this supposed baby face on this fucking guy that doesn't deserve it. And somebody's, well, the story is he must bleed to get in the Blackpool combat. Oh, for fuck's sake. Unless it's a goddamn no disqualification grudge match where there's fucking personal animosity between two people. Why are they fucking ripping and clawing and biting and bleeding and the people are cheering this poor kid? It's the, their logic and their psychology is so ass backwards. That's why they can't grow this audience. Everybody else be like, oh, what the fuck is going on here? And then suddenly, because it's phony too, that's another thing. When the Briscoes at FTR fight, or even with MJF and CM Punk, or a lot of shit from the territory days, you're looking at a fight and the blood is incidental because you're lost in the, the idea of this thing. But suddenly, Yuta gets mauled for however long, half the match, and then suddenly shit cans Moxley, jumps up to the top rope, does a crossbody over the ring post to the floor on Moxley through a table, which gets holy shit and fight forever chance from these people. And then Moxley's the one that took the move, got crossbodied through a table by a 200-pound man coming from 12 feet in the air, and he gets back in the ring first. And Yuta, who's spurting blood everywhere, can't hardly beat the 10 count, but once he rolls back in the ring for the 10 count, or to beat the 10 count, immediately gets up to his feet, runs and backslides Moxley for a two count. Then he hits a German suplex. Then he hits a Samoan drop. Then he does Brian Danielson's stomp. Then he does a splash off the top rope. And yes, all these things are getting pops, and all these things would, of course, get pops when you from people, any, anybody that was ever allowed to do this, it would have gotten a pop, but they were never allowed to do it because it's fucking stupid. This is shit you learn your first month in wrestling school. And then he gets the STF on Moxley. And Moxley hits him with a clothesline and gets a two count. And then he crawls over and spends a while telling him what to do because the director cuts away to a crowd shot and the announcers say, look at Moxley trash talking him. And then Moxley's biting the blood and then hits his paradigm shift, gets a two count. I, I wrote, they've never pushed Paige like this. He's their world champion. Then he gets a choke and Yuta breaks it. Then he elbows him to death. And Yuta's still fighting. And then the brain buster paradigm shift. Two count. Yeah, it's like a video game. It's phony in front of your eyes. Of course people are going, well, look at that. Because you never see that. There's a reason for it. What do they have to do to anybody now that's much bigger and more impressive with a better upside either more experience or better athletic ability or potential future than Wheeler Yuta. And since this was not in the context of an actual fight that you could get lost in and believe was a contest, but rather an exhibition of phony wrestling shit, you were told that because of the people who taken these huge ass kickings and then immediately jumping up and going 100 miles an hour. And the fact that everybody's smart 
and knows that he's just bleeding to get over. It's a freak show at this point. There's no wrestling continuity, no logic, and no psychology. So then you're just watching the fake fight. Well, for the fans that like AEW, that's probably what they like is fake fights because that's what most of their matches look like. Well, then you're doing a fake fight with a middle card guy that's never going to draw you 15 cents in Chinese money, and you're risking serious injury to one of your main event guys and potential cancellation from the new programming woman that's probably not wanting to be in charge of the guy biting the head off a live chicken at the county fair. Your thoughts, Brian? I liked it. I thought it was <laughs> one of the better Moxley matches. He had a good one with Jay Lethal a few weeks ago. I thought this was good. I don't disagree with all of your... If he'd have done this for Jay Lethal? How over do you think Jay Lethal would be? I don't disagree with the things you said. And in fact, you kind of convinced me of a lot of these things. <laughs> as you're talking about them, but... I like the story and I can get into it and I can get into it enough that I could overlook some of the ridiculous shit like kicking out of everything. Everyone kicks out everything. When I was young, a finisher was literally the finish of the match and then that was it and you accepted it. Now they don't accept it. You have to kick out of things first. Have you seen, have you seen Mike Mondo's tweets, by the way? My, at, at the Mike Mondo on Twitter. I have not, no. Mondo, over the last couple of days, I've retweeted about 15 or 20 of them, so apparently you're not paying attention to me either. Um, just, he's been tweeting in 240 characters or less, common sense rules of thumb of things that you learn in wrestling school, in basic training, that nobody applies anymore, or very seldom do. And it just, it, I've tweeted that if anybody either wants to be a wrestler or thinks they already are, they ought to be following Mondo because he gave out more knowledge in 10 or 12 tweets than you get watching every wrestling program on television for the course of a week. And yes, uh, there's, there's elements of things in here. I'm not against all blood. I'm against blood when it's just foolish. I'm not against this angle. I'm against the talent that's being used in the angle. Because they're, they're, I'm sorry, I bless them, they want to elevate the young man. Look at him, sorry. Maybe later, not now. There's elements of everything in this, but not as it's all put together at this particular point in time. I don't think they did themselves any favors. Go ahead, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Well, did you see the post-match? Well, Regal and Danielson come out and shake his, his hand and wish him well. That's pretty much it, right? Did anybody get beat up? I missed that. No, part. that was that was the end. It was a respectful yeah. ending of the program yes. at 11 p.m. on a Friday. And and there's William Regal, who's probably 60 or 70 pounds heavier than this guy, and three or four inches taller. <laughs> He's shaking. It's, it's. I will tell you this: if you watched it with commentary, next time you hear him on commentary, think this: even though he's representing Moxley, and he's, I guess, slightly heelish. I think if they just had William Regal as a one-man commentary team talking over these matches, it would be the yeah. best show in wrestling. Because if you listen to what he says, it's fascinating, it's smart, it's observant. I would love for Tony, Tony, if you're listening, if you just happen to be listening, one show, give William Regal a shot as a single man commentator <laughs> calling the action. I've been watching way too much Chicago from the 50s. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it, it, it beats... Wherever from the 2020s, and 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 there's too many voices talking at it. That's why we tune a lot of them out because there's too many different people trying to jump in, interact, say their various things. But anyway, I you know I hate that everybody happened to like this and I don't, but I don't for the reasons that I just mentioned. And doing shit like this not only is you got to pick the right time, the right place, and the right individuals. And, uh, you know, and again, I'm not trying to knock the, if they, when they bring the kid in and just make him a flunky and he's, he is a flunky interacting with flunky partners and getting beat by other people, then you can't just turn, especially when there's no raging 
visual or physical attribute that he has it's sc- or, or wild personality that's screaming, push me, do this, he's a good athlete, so bring him along slowly and let him percolate. You can't just have Moxley go out there and do this for everybody on the card, or then it becomes meaningless. And again, I will apologize publicly if Wheeler Yuta becomes the world champion of anything ever, much less in the next year or two. But I think I'm safe. 